hurts. Oh, this oh, hurts so, so much. big. So big. Oh, I think my baby's coming. Oh, oh, and it's coming really oh, fast. Oh. Oh. What the hell was that? Leo the Lion is, without a doubt, one of the worst movies I have ever seen. And I've seen a lot of bad movies. I've seen Kiara the Brave, I've seen Mars Needs Moms, and I have seen Cargo. But Leo the Lion is a special kind of awful. It is this trifecta of garbage. Actually, it's more of a pentagram. We have an awful story. Yeah, that's true. I'm a, uh, how do you say, um, vegetarian. Awful animation. <laughs> Awful voice acting. The heart of the jungle is closer than you think, my friend. You must embrace the feelings within so you can find your way. That's what you want. That's why you're on yeah. your journey, isn't it? Wanna come? Awful dialogue. I'm not a bloodthirsty lion. I'm apple juice thirsty. I'm iced coffee thirsty with a little dash of soy milk. And awful editing. <laughs> I mean, this thing has a 1.9 on IMDb, but for some reason has a 48% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, they don't know what they're talking about. This movie is much worse than that. This film makes the Emoji Movie look like Toy Story. I'm a vegetarian. I'll say again, yes, I'm a vegetarian. And like the title of the video says, this is also the worst movie on Netflix. Like, I get you, Netflix. You guys take a shotgun approach to content, but you guys can turn things down. Netflix, you're greenlit. Who am I speaking with? This movie was a challenge to research. I mean, it's kind of a mystery. You can't just type in Leo the Lion on Google and have a Wikipedia page. You gotta dig deeper than that. At first, I thought it was the Weinstein Company that made this film, but it turns out all they do is distribution. So I kept digging, and I found out that the company responsible for this film is some Italian company called Dujas Film. According to their website, they popped up in 2005. The article goes on to say that the first film from the company would be La Storia de Leo, so Leo the Lion. I have no idea when this movie was exactly made. One source says 2006, another source says 2004, but the article on their homepage was published in 2005, and it arrived in America in 2013. So, uh, no one knows when this film was made. Actually, what I suspect is that no one wants to claim this film. It never happened. What most likely happened is that the Weinstein Company picked up this film for distribution and redubbed it in English in 2013. Why? I don't know. This film actually looks like Sin. I mean, the original Sin that caused the fall of mankind. But hey, whatever, bring it on. Let's put it on Netflix. I mean, yeah, it looks like early 2000 trash and there might be serial commercials with better animation. But hey, it's for kids. <laughs> they won't care. Peppers, avocados, honey, dew, and citrus fruit. I eat a lot of beans, even though they make me toot. So this movie's origins, in a nutshell, is an Italian company made a shitty movie back in 2005. It got picked up by the Weinstein Company in 2013, and somehow found its way to Netflix. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the movie. So we got the Weinstein Company logo, and then boom, there it is, Leo the Lion. And the people responsible for it? We start off with this first person view, and we hear this narrator give us the lowdown. For Leo, unlike the other cubs within his pride, was a vegetarian. Off the bat, I can already see a thousand things to criticize. First off, there's like four, five males in this pride? That's not how lions work. But then I quickly realized that this kind of critique is the least of my worries. There are much bigger things to be concerned about. 
I'm hungry. Are we going to hunt any banana trees today? So it's established that Leo is a vegetarian, but his mom's trying to change that. You're getting older now, Leo. Far too old for bananas. Today I'm going to teach you to hunt for something a little more meaty. And so begins one of the most epic chase scenes of all time. But don't worry, something actually happens. His mother dies and falls off a waterfall. His mother tells him to search out the heart of the jungle and that he'll be safe there, even though he's with a lion pride, which he should probably stay with. Do you even know why it's called a pride, Leo? <laughs> because we're hunters and hunting makes us proud. <sighs> hey! But you don't like hunting. You don't like meat. You're just weird. Ah, uh, poor Leo is... Whoa! Whoa! Who, who's this guy? You don't have to eat meat to make sure you don't go hungry. I know I sure didn't. Is is that Leo? Why are we seeing this? Why is he old? So we find out the narrator is actually a character, and he looks awful. Lion, run! Uncle Ope, hey. That fellow you may have guessed is me. <laughs> you so fucking precious when you smile. Yeah. Whoa! Who do you think you're growling at? Have some respect for the elders of the forest. Beware my horns. You, you prepare to suffer the wrath of Uncle Where is he, that beast? If you hadn't stopped me, I would have taught that lion a lesson, Leo. He thinks b b being a lion is all about b being big and tough and mean, but it's not. So the stuttering antelope is like Leo's friend or something. We learn this from a flashback to events that happened 10 seconds ago. Yes, that was Leo. Always saving my life back in those early days. Looking back now, it's easy to see that Leo was always the hero. He just had to find a way to believe it himself. And suddenly an elephant. Okay. Oh my goodness! I'm gonna be late for class again! So Leo meets the elephant, and they really hit it off. We find out that she's pregnant, and Leo tries to help. Please, I need you to hurry and get me to... Beatrice, the elephant doctor. We are then told how Savannah lost her husband. I had a husband. Eli. Eli Font. Eli Font. <laughs> but a mighty elephant is not so easy to catch without help. And now you finally out of the way, old friend. I'll marry Savannah. <laughs> You'll bow before the summer. <laughs> okay, so this capturing of Eli Font is really interesting because it implies that Maximus the Elephant worked together with the poachers to get rid of Eli. I had seen what the white elephant had done, but I kept it to myself. What? Watch her eyebrows here. And now, he'll never see our baby. There's this really odd sexual tension between Leo and Savannah. Hmm. I like having you here, but do you think you could fetch a doctor? Oh, that's nice. So Leo runs off to go get the doctor, an elephant doctor, one who went to medical school. I've been to medical school, which means I'm terribly smart. Don't worry, she won't let you forget. Who's that? He must be our dad. Dad? Oh, no, 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 no. I am not your dad. Now, excuse me while I lick your face. Also, I've heard this voice actor before. Because we want a mom and a dad. You don't want us? Oh, it's Debbie Derryberry, the voice of Jimmy Neutron. Miss Val, what is the standard for research on these extra credit reports? And then suddenly, a fire. So Leo has this brilliant idea to take these kids, who, by the way, 
aren't his, away from the jungle, across the desert, to a place that might not exist. The heart of the jungle! This would be the perfect time to fight it, that's for sure! You know what? Nah, it makes sense. Go for it. Come on, come on. Oh. Uh, you know, that's pretty evil. Shooting at animals as they run from a fire. I can't find my What heart. should we do? <laughs> we must take her with us. She'll be safe in the heart of the jungle. And now there's a zebra that's part of the D&D group, followed by a monkey and then a cheetah, which none of them add anything to this film. They're just there. Okay, so it's officially time to meet the villain of this film, Maximus Elefante, who is voiced by Matthew Mercer. That's right, the voice actor for McCree. I will find them. You know that I am the biggest and strongest in the jungle. I'll bring them home. It's high noon somewhere in the world. Gaze upon my tusks, my dear. Are these not the tusks of a leader? Maybe a new king? My heart goes out to Matthew Mercer and all of the people who had to work on this film. It must have been a total drag. And here is the villain song, which is just totally ripping off Be Prepared from The Lion King, all the way down to the Nazi marching hyenas. March to my drum, you better do what I say. future is littered with prizes, and though I'm the main addressee, I'm Maximus, you're nobody. Hmm. So sometimes these weird pseudo songs pop up. They don't really make any sense, and it sounds more like talk singing. And forget about rhyming, who needs that? You gather all your friends, you muster all the strength within. And if you're not so strong, <laughs> just grin and sing this song. All together, friends forever, together not apart. Sing it, kid! <laughs> My mommy says she wishes you were dead. So if you actually watch this movie, you'll notice these weird parts where there's slow motion, but it's not real slow motion. It's like taking a piece of footage and stretching it out, and they do it throughout the entire movie. Oh, oh, oh. Uncle oh. It's okay, it's okay, keep your eyes forward. Good, there you go, that's the stuff. Nice work, okay, keep going. Now, just nice and slow. Uh, uh, easy, you're okay, you're okay. Okay, good, good. This insufferable chatter between the baby elephants is just, ugh, fingers on a chalkboard. Good, good work, keep going. Don't stand still, it's okay. It's okay. So Leo falls and the kids move on without him. Then Maximus Elefante gets shot in his ass. Step right up. So Leo survives his fall. I know, it's a bummer. And meets some turtle inside a cave. This turtle is actually the worst character in the movie. Like seriously, listen. I consider traveling, but where would I go? What would I do? What was that saying my great ancestor used to say all the time? What was it? Oh yes, age is but a pebble compared to the pearl of wisdom. Oh, oh, so bad. Oh, and suddenly hyenas. This lion has nerve. He's going to be in a hors d'oeuvre. And those birds in the sky are going to make vulture pie. <laughs> so these hyenas kind of rhyme, and they also sound very racist towards Mexicans. Stay back, they're our hyenas chase the vultures through space. Back off before we go loco. <laughs> Hey, our malnourished hero has returned. Leo is here, and you can face me if you dare. <laughs> During this fight scene, they used the same footage twice for the zebra. Sorry, Leo. <laughs> Meanwhile, Maximus is tripping balls at the elephant graveyard. Trademarked. <laughs> it's him, the king! 
I'm sorry. I betrayed you. <laughs> All right, so Savannah and the other elephants decide to go looking for her babies. But for some reason, they're dancing and singing while they're doing it. Help me find my babies! So Leo and Uncle Lope decide to hold down a zebra against her will and take her milk. <gasps> it's a lion! What are you doing here? Please don't eat me! <sighs> now, Leo! <sighs> now let's cool it down. It's kind of rapey. Wait, who worked on this film again? Oh, okay, that makes sense. In this scene, she has no udders, but now she has them, and they're really detailed. So they finally find the heart of the jungle. This is it? Where's the food? I want to eat! What? Just life-sustaining water? That sucks. While at the pool, there's this chameleon shaman there who starts to sing. Doors will open, you'll go far, just march along to your own drum. Sing a tune, hum your own hum. What? Leo finally overcomes his fear of water, which is kind of dangerous because I'm gonna assume he has no idea how to swim. And now you'll find the jungle's heart through courage, a most noble art. I'm not afraid anymore! I'm free! I'm totally free! The heart is within! The heart is within! Everyone, come on, get on the rainbow. <laughs> rainbow, ho oh, ho, <laughs> okay. Now we're in the jungle's heart. Through courage, the most noble art. Yes, yes, it's it's the day. What did they say? Ah, uh, it's more breathtaking than I ever imagined. <laughs> and the shaman, quite the lady. Apparently, Uncle Lope likes the reptiles. Well, what about mommies, huh? Oh shit, I forgot about your mom. So Leo and the baby elephants start to go back to their home, but then Maximus shows up. Now come along, little ones. Time to return you to mommy. And when I do, she will become my bride, <gasps> and I will become your new daddy. That's right, you little punks, get going. <laughs> Slow down, we can't keep up! Stop, I'm not going any further! That right there was not the original voice actor. If either of you say anything about what just happened, I guarantee I will end your mother's life. And when I'm done with her, Leo will be next. And where will that leave you, little orphans, hmm? Wow, that's, uh, kind of dark. If you tell your mom, I'll kill her. And then you guys will be next. So Savannah finally arrives, and Leo tries to tell her the truth. I thought you were our friend, but you're nothing more than a vicious, deceitful fiend who's going to eat my baby. Not that's not what happened. Don't be upset. Wait, you believe this guy? Not even gonna ask any questions here? All right, so Savannah believes Maximus and takes off back to the jungle. But then Maximus tries to kill Leo, but kills Uncle Lope instead, which is totally fine by me. No! Uncle Lope! Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> wow, they are really ripping off the Lion King. Help! Help somebody! 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 Help! Somebody! Anybody! So we have this flashback of moments throughout the movie. Could you imagine if they did this in The Lion King for Mufasa? What am I going to do with the two of you? I just don't know. I think we need some magic here. Uncle Lope, I send you hope. Now face your fate and come awake. Whoa, 
Wait, so he was sleeping? Uh, okay, so the flashback was pointless. Mind you, we went from the jungle to the heart of the jungle, which isn't even in the jungle, and now we are going back to the jungle. Well, you know what, whatever, it's wedding time. But Leo shows up to stop Maximus. He, he, King Eli Font's disappearance was no accident. That night, Maximus crept up behind Eli and betrayed the king by making sure he was captured by outsiders. Ah! You? Now watch this. The ink on her head just disintegrates. You this is all your fault, you vegetarian lion! So an epic battle commences between Maximus and Leo that soon devolves into a chase scene from Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Come here, lion! No! Not again. Oh, no. Rest in peace. And that was the last anyone heard from Maximus Elefante. That's right. He was captured by the poachers, and his tusks were cut off and sold on the Chinese black market. So we reach the end of this movie, and the babies, Leo and Savannah, are all together and happy. Thanks for <laughs> believing in me, Savannah. How can I ever thank you, Leo? He enjoyed playing with the young ones whenever he could. <laughs> he taught them about life. He also taught them about love. We go back to Elder Leo telling his class about the story. Maximus was captured, and no longer was any bullying allowed in the jungle. That freedom and peace would come to the elephants. Your mother was really grateful. Stop! Oh my god. They actually f***ed. Leo the lion and Savannah the elephant had sex. And those are the outcome. That's a clean burning hell, I tell you what. <laughs> and to wrap things up, we got one more song. And it's about Leo being a vegetarian. I'm a vegetarian. I'll say again, yes, I'm a vegetarian. I didn't say a veterinarian. Listen again. I'm a vegetarian. I'm a vegetarian. All right, finally, the credits and their lowercase glory. A special thanks to Cardio for his patience. Buddy, you better be thanking the entire audience for their patience. Ah. Oh. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> okay, now you all know what we're dealing with and what this movie is about. So let's go back to the pentagram. One, animation. The character models, their faces, their movement, their textures, all garbage. Like, it's truly horrendous how bad this quality is. Slow down, elephants weren't made for speed. I learned that in medical school, and an elephant never forgets. Number two, the story. This thing is all over the place. It's inconsistent, it lacks focus, and the characters are so unpleasant. Oh, water. It had to be water. Perfect. A herd of kumquats. Come to Leo, kumquats. Come to Leo, come to Leo. <laughs> oh, hey, good looking. Number three, the voice acting. This is the least offensive part of the movie. Like, they had some good actors on this film, but they were poorly directed. They come across as a nuisance, annoying, and insincere. Yet I have so many things to talk about. Older you get, wiser you get. What was that saying my ancestors used to say all the time? Age is but a pebble compared to the pearl of wisdom. Number four. Editing. There are scenes that go on for far too long. There are scenes that are way too fast. And there are scenes that are stretched out and aren't actually slow motion. Whenever I see these scenes, it takes me out of the movie. Yes, that was Leo. 
always saving my life back in those early days. Looking back now, it's easy to see that Leo was always the hero. And five, the dialogue. There are moments when the characters say something that I can't even understand. Because, Leo, they smell your scent. What? But I wore deodorant. In conclusion, this is the worst movie on Netflix by a long shot. I mean, there might be some little kids who might enjoy it because it has bright colors and has movement. But by that comparison, dangling keys in front of somebody is a much better film. I realize that there's some films out there that they're so bad that they're good, but this is not that. Leo the Lion is just trash. So do yourself a favor and never watch it. I'm a vegetarian.